Hello, this is my uh, Z80 based breadboard computer um, that I started working on about a month a month ago. Um, it's today is October 7, 2018, and currently in the seventh revision, uh, with each revision having very minor um, enhancements that make it a little easier to use. And so um, I'll get started uh, explaining the different parts of it. Uh, so we've got, of course, the CPU, uh, and then we've got a 62256 uh, static RAM chip. It's a 32 kilobyte chip, but only eight of the um, address lines are connected uh, to the bus, and so um, we can only enter a program up to 256 bytes. But um, so far, the biggest program that I've programmed in it has only been 34 bytes, so I don't think there's a risk of running out of memory uh, for the small programs that'll use it in this configuration. Um, there's a 7414 chip, um, which is used for debouncing the, uh, the reset switch and the clock switches, as well as um, two of the inverters are used uh, to form an oscillator and uh, uh, one is used to invert the um, IO request line that's used by uh, one of the latches to show the the data that's output in in the program um, there's a, a 4020 chip a hex counter that's used to step through the different addresses as opposed to flipping dip switches and um, and then the the data is input with eight tactile switches that use uh, d-type flip-flops in order to um, toggle them as though they were latched uh, push button switches instead of momentary on toggle switches so so we'll get started um, by actually entering a small program and seeing how it works. Okay, so we just plugged in uh, power and uh, we can hit the reset button to uh, kick off the CPU. Right now it uh, doesn't have anything to execute and so we'll put it in stop mode to release the bus and we're gonna hit zero to reset the address to address zero and just enter a six byte program just to see that it actually does something. So at address zero, we want three E. Uh, so we'll enter three E, press store, and then tap or hold down the next key. Uh, at address one, we want one. And at address 2, D3. At address 3, it calls for FF here, but really this could be anything because it's just going to activate the I.O. line. And at address 4, 7. At address 5, 18. And lastly, FB. And to run it, we'll switch to run and hit the reset button. So it's, it's just sweeping uh, left with a rotate left with carry. And so uh, we could single step by switching uh, the oscillator off and just tapping the clock and it should move the data left which it did as you can see the oscillator is a lot nicer because uh, it does it automatically there's also um, a, a variable resistor in line with a another resistor for the oscillator so that we can control the speed and make it run very slow or much quicker. Um, if we want to debug the program or make changes to it, 
uh, we would go into stop mode and then uh, instead of write for the toggle switches we could switch to read and now it's um, able to step through uh, and view the memory so at, at address 0 we have our 3E e, and at address 1 we've got 1 2 is D3 3 is D3 4 is 7 if we want to rotate right instead of left we would change that to an F so let's go ahead and do that we'll switch back to right mode and change that to an F store it and now it's going to the right so once again uh, if we want to go back to the left we would just change that to a 7 store it and now it's going to the left so and and if we want to see what's beyond our uh, program memory contents we could just keep stepping in read mode and there's just basically um, garbage in, in RAM that we didn't program which we would expect so that's pretty much it for this project um, I'll leave links I, I got the the labels from uh, Grant Searle's webpage. It's a it's a nice PDF file that has um, labels you can print out and it affixed to the tops of uh, commonly used chips. Um, and uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching.